So, I'm going to tell you about performance. Can you hear me? Because there's a little bit echo here. So, and it was a performance that happened here in this space. I was in Ethiopia in 2014. And from that journey, I made this work. It took seven days of performances. And in that, I tried to focus on the traces, the prints of a performative act. And I had this solo exhibition opportunity here, Nikolai Kunsthal. And I called the show Being Human Being. It was a mixture of uh, inspiration from uh, the different tribes in Ethiopia that I visited. Um, how they used the earth in the clay in many different ways and also how it, they used it for their hair, huts and food and many different things. It was very inspiring. And um, I uh, invited people to, uh, to, perf to perform with me and um, to make traces together with me. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> um, Yeah, so um, the first day, actually also what I didn't tell you was that in these seven days, people were invited to, um, to come by and to uh, see what was performed. So on the first day, um, in the beginning I was alone. And um, I was uh, laying in two tons of wet clay um, that I had from the north southern part of Denmark. And I was laying there for five hours here. And um, uh, it was during the cultural event in Copenhagen here. And um, I. Um, I, uh, there was like five hours long there were there were people coming in there was about four thousand visitors and they um, they were interacting with me they um, were um, taking the clay away from me taking the earth they were invited to play with the clay and to light a candle also. So um, it was very kind of a mass, like a mass for someone else. It was a very sacred ritualistic performance. And I was laying like 20 centimeters from the floor and I was freezing for five hours. And um, I couldn't hear any, uh, I, I couldn't see anyone, I could only hear people. I could hear them saying like, is that a doll laying in the mud? Or is that a real woman? Or um, what is it about? And um, it was weird because I felt all these hands and I could hear the hands, many hands around me without ever seeing them. So, before I lay down in the clay, I thought, well, in these five hours, I can just think about my life and I can think about a new practice, I can relax. Um, but I was completely wrong. Um, 
I was almost freezing to death. And the only thing that I could think about was like, I'm not cold. And um, so it was like a mantra. And uh, I could hear people talking and I was thinking like, I'm not cold, I'm not cold, I'm not cold. And then after the five hours, I got out of the clay and people start to clap. And there are about like uh, 500 candles around me, like a huge birthday cake, really weird. And um, yeah, I took a shower. My skin was really red, had some rash also. And the next day I felt really weak. It was like I just came, I was just born. It just came out of my mother's womb. I was so fragile, I could cry any time. It was just so extreme, this experience, because there was like so many people that I was in contact with. So that was the first day. So uh, the second day, um, I invited my sister and my brother, and we used the same clay. And well, I, as you can see, uh, this is the interior of old church, and uh, which makes things more sacred. And um, well, the space is sort of, if you want to see later on around behind the wall, it's about like 30 meters long. So we had these um, 30 meters uh, cloth banners and my brother, sister, and me, we had placed them on the floor and then we were walking on the banners, leaving footprints behind. And um, so, yeah, so we were following each other and making footprints. And then um, it, we did it for five hours. So on the third day, um, I invited my parents and my daughter. My daughter, what my daughter was like, uh, she was 13 at the time. And um, everything was made out of clay and the earth from the big pile. And I also had brought some earth from Ethiopia. Uh, the earth in Ethiopia is red. And they use it there, the tribe people, uh, they use it on the skin to protect themselves against the sun. And um, so I was making uh, prints with them. So we were making uh, face printing together and uh, we were making uh, mud masks and printing masks. And we did that for five hours long. And, um, but it was very unpleasant actually because we got dirt in our, our eyes. And I also found out that my daughter had a concussion that day, so she was really ill. And um, yeah, that was the fourth day. So then the next day, I, uh, I invited a colleague of mine, uh, Jeanette Ehlers, and um, she's uh, also a Copenhagen-based uh, video artist. And um, with her, um, I was making eight paintings. Um, we only used our hands, we painted with our hands, and um, we did everything synchronized, like we were, what we were making and what we were doing. So we did actually everything the same thing at the same time. So on the fifth day, I uh, invited another colleague of mine. He's a, a dancer and a choreographer, Casper uh, um, uh, uh, Ranoi, and he, um, with him, it's really nice to work with him. Uh, he has a, uh, his own uh, dance company, and um, with him, we collected a lot of, uh, lot of the, the um, clay together, and we uh, 
uh, we uh, throwed it into the floor on, the, on it. And then we uh, were standing on it and we made pirouettes on it. And we also took a lot of uh, clay in our hands, like a clay ball. And then we were like screaming, synchronized, and then pressing the balls, the clay balls. And then we put them on the floor. We did that for um, five hours long. So then on the sixth day, um, I um, invited my, uh, one of my favorite uh, female artists, uh, Kirsten Justesen. She's also a Copenhagen-based artist. And um, she's from a different generation than I am. And um, I, we have many things in common. And um, I always wanted to be friends with her. So I invited her to make traces with me. And she was actually the only one who came uh, with an idea. And so I gave her that, uh, that she could decide what we were going to do. And she wanted to make uh, portraits of my face for five hours long. So on that day, I was sitting for five hours and I was freezing again. So, Then the last day, day seven, um, I invited the audience to uh, interact with me again. And um, it was some something different this time. Um, I made this mixture of uh, the dirt and the butter. It's like an Ethiopian uh, recipe. Uh, they use it for... Um, uh, on the skin, they, they, put, they do some dirt on the skin and mix it. Oh, it's like uh, some grease on the skin and they mix it with the red uh, earth. And um, it's, uh, it looks really good when the sun is shining. And uh, so I made this simple mixture and then I invited people to sit with me at the table. And uh, so I put the mixture on my lips and I put it on their lips. And then I had this uh, white handkerchief. And um, so we made both a kiss print on the white handkerchief. And we did it only one time. And then we had another handkerchief and made a print so that the visitor had one and I had one. So after the seven days, well, it was like seven days, I invited people from the public, my family, my friends and colleagues to make traces with me. And the traces, they were exhibited here in the space for um, three months long. And for me, it was about uh, the going back to the origin of uh, the human being. And um, uh, because we come from the earth and um, we go back in the earth. It's like in the biblical sense, if you get buried. And um, also, I, I, my intention was to make traces from performative acts and uh, to go back to, the, 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 uh, back to the traces of the human being. And actually, one of our famous ancestors is from um, Ethiopia. And um, she's Lucy, she's the first walking woman and they found her in late 60s. So here it started my journey in Ethiopia and I brought it here in the Nicolai church. So this was the monologue and we have a short break because I'm going to call Lilibet over, because uh, Lilibet is the one who um, I uh, who told me this performance to me, and she's going now to tell you her memory about her performance here. So I'm going to call her to come over. Um, 
because I thought it's maybe good not to have her around. Yes, you can come over. So you can have a, maybe if you want to have look what, what's behind it, you can do it right now because Lilibet is coming up and... Behind you? you have something I can, yeah, I can put it on. Pocket, yeah. Shall I sit down or what? What you want. That's up what to you. What did you do? I was just standing there. Okay. So yeah, you were standing, okay. But you can do it this, but yeah, what you feel like. Do, you, do I have to introduce or do, do I just start? They know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to tell about your performance. What? And that you're going to yeah. tell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Talk just yes. As normal as you would talk. Uh, yeah. That's really hard. What is normal yeah. these days? <laughs> but you talk to people. It's different. Yeah. So okay. Okay. But I took a little bit. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, Halli. Hello. Nu begynder jeg at snakke, og you said that acoustic is weird, so yeah, I will, I will try to speak a little bit slower. Good. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Did you look at the time or what? It goes well. Yeah. But, uh, Why don't can well, you make some? Short. <laughs> can you make some some sign to me? Oh, <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just put my. What, what do you think? The sign. I don't know. When I have talked five minutes. <laughs> okay. And do this? this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. yeah. It's just sometimes you don't know. Yeah. So are you ready? Then I call. Then I'm yeah. Ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know, should I stand up? <laughs> I Can I sit down? I'm sorry, it looks a little weird. So much light. <laughs> okay. I know, yeah. Uh, I don't know, what do you want? <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is um, Lilibeth. Quenka Rasmussen, and um, yeah, I, um, I'm going to tell about my seven-day performance, uh, which took place in this space in 2014. Um, it started for the Cultural Night 
in Copenhagen. Um, and the exhibition was called Being Human Being. And um, the whole concept of um, this exhibition was to materialize a performative act. And um, the whole exhibition was made out of just earth, different types of earth from south of Denmark and um, Ethiopia. I have smuggled from Africa earth in my suitcase and all different kinds of earth that I have um, been collecting. And uh, together with different people, I invited to make works with me. And on the first day for the cultural night, um, I was lying in 1.5 ton earth um, from south, south Denmark. Uh, and um, I remember that I, I wasn't really looking forward to it, but I thought, oh, finally, I can just lie down and relax for five hours. Uh, I haven't done that for a long time. Um, and I have bought an electric blanket to put underneath uh, the earth so I, couldn't, I wouldn't freeze too much. And I remember the director of the museum at that time, Elizabeth Stelin, she's like, don't do that, you will electrify yourself. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> and then I was a little, uh, oh my God, I have to freeze for five hours. And um, I was very wrong about uh, taking five hours off and relaxing because it was very, 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 very tough to just lie down in very, very cold earth for five hours. Um, it is the hardest thing I ever done in my life, I think. Um, um, so it was a very, very hard experience for me. Um, I was lying um, on this level, or almost at the ground level, and I could, um, I couldn't hear, I couldn't see anyone. We just feel people and um, hear what they were talking about. Um, I remember my daughter and her brothers and sisters, they, they came over and whispered, hey, hey, it's, it's us. Um, <laughs> that was really funny. And, um, and we are here, we are here. And, but so that it's, I, it was very, um, very uh, powerful it, uh, to just lie and, and, and use the senses of the, just the hearing people and not seeing people. And um, I remember that the first hour was very long and I was thinking how, how, how on earth I'm gonna, earth <laughs> it was very funny, <laughs> how, how will I, sustain this, this performance for so long. Um, and, um, and I remember that I, had, I really had to pee and I was just thinking how, how am I gonna, I only been here for 10 minutes, now I have to pee, what am I gonna do? And then uh, I decided to, to stand up in the middle of the performance, just went to the bathroom and came back, <laughs> which must have looked very, very weird, but I did that. Um, I also consider just, maybe I could have just peed in the clay, no one would see that. Um, <laughs> but I went to the toilet. Um, so the first hour was really tough, and then there was three hours that just went very, very fast. Uh, I, I, actually, I, I was just breathing and breathing. That's the only thing I was, I was doing. People were asking me later, what, what did you do? what were you thinking of when you were lying there? And it was like, I didn't think, I was just breathing. And um, the, last, the last hour, I asked uh, the assistants to, to tell me when there was one hour left. And I, I wish I never have done that because it was really tough the last, the last hour also, just waiting to get out of, uh, out of there. Um, it was at one point that I, I got really uh, scared and I um, realized that it was really um, a wild thing to do, I think. And there was um, a guy, I don't know why I knew it was a guy, but well, I guess I saw the pictures later or someone told me, but I could just feel that there was someone who was trying to bury me 
underneath the earth. And I was really uh, very, um, I was really getting nervous there. Um, that was a, a point uh, under, during the performance I really, um, where I was scared actually, yeah. Yeah. That was the first day. <laughs> so I had uh, six next, the following six days. Um, I, second day I invited my brother and sister and we were making footprints for five hours uh, during the opening hours of uh, the con this, uh, Nikolai concert. Um, and the footprints, they were hung up in the ceiling, so um, as banners uh, through this, this entire building, uh, uh, room. Um, that was a much uh, more pleasant experience to be with my, my siblings, um, just, yeah, making footprints, uh, following each other foot, footsteps. The third day, as I remember, I, it was uh, the artist Jeanette Ehlers and I who made uh, handprints. We made eight or six canvases uh, with different, of different patterns, uh, signs together. And I remember, because we have a common man, uh, that her boyfriend was there and was my ex-boyfriend. And um, he was taking so many pictures and posting on Facebook. <laughs> That's what I remember from that day. It was a very, um, very uh, memorable, day, memorable day as well. Um, I also remember that there was one man who came every, every day of, for these seven days. He was there every day. I don't know the guy, but um, he must have liked uh, being here because he came every day. So that was, the f so we are the fourth day. It was my parents. No, it was the um, choreographer and dancer, Kasper Raunhoy, which um, uh, is representing my, I, I work a lot with intermedia art, um, yeah, so I have worked with Casper before, and I invited him to to make also handprints with the clay. We took um, the clay bed was I was lying in, and I made handprints for maybe three hours, and then we played around, took the clay, and maybe ten kilos in our hands, and we just um, smashed it to the floor and made pirouettes uh, in the earth. And, um, and I remember that his pirouettes were much better than mine, but my sculptures were better than his. Um, we also experimented by using our mouths, our lips, and making uh, small, small paintings, small canvases, with just making um, um, marks with our lips. The fifth day, no, the sixth day, I invited uh, the artist uh, Kirsten Justusen, um, a Danish artist who's based here, which I, I would say she's the, probably the only artist in Denmark that I ha I'm like looking at, I would say. Um, she works also a lot with her body and um, in, yeah, in a feministic tradition. And, um, she was the only artist who, uh, who, um, who told me what she wanted to do. The other artists, they just followed my instructions. And she, um, she told me that uh, she wanted to make a classical, uh, uh, what is it called in English, buste, a portrait of me from the clay. So she said she did that um, the whole day. Uh, and uh, it was really hard to sit still for five hours. I, I remember I was used to running around and doing a lot of stuff, and um, so I had to sit still for five hours, which is really hard. 
And now I, I forgot my parents and my daughter because they were before Kirsten, the day before Kirsten on Friday. And we made a lot of um, facials of the earth like um, putting mud, making mud masks and, and making prints of the fa our faces for the entire day. And um, so the seventh day was the day, a Sunday, and that day um, I was alone and I invited people to, um, to make this, um, <clears throat> I called the, the, the piece uh, Kisses from Lalibela where I was sitting at a table and, um, and I was making um, a picture with the audience who was coming in, um, making, putting mud on my lips and they would also put mud on their lips and they would, would make the picture together and they would get one and I would get one. And there was also a big canvas where, where I asked people to put their fingerprints on with, with the earth. So that was uh, the seventh day. And um, just to, to say all in all, I think it was really a very uh, radical and very minimalistic for me just to just work with the earth. And it was um, a very big challenge to to perform uh, when you are actually doing works. So um, it was a um, very uh, interesting uh, process. And it, yeah, I wanted to experiment with. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Welcome. That's <laughs> what do so I do with this? We have uh, a uh, short break, but actually shorter because the time is already <laughs> getting really short. Um, and so I would